Hi everyone, welcome to another sit down with Michael Francis. Hope everybody is doing well. Today I'm very excited. We have an interview with the real Donnie Brasco, former FBI agent Joe Pistone. I've known Joe for many years now. I met him once uh, when I was in the life. Fortunately, I never did business with him back then, but I've met him since. And um, I'll be honest with you, he's a pleasure to know. He's, a, he's just a great guy, and he and I have become very, very friendly. We have a lot of respect for one another, and I respect him even as an agent because Joe did the job right. He never framed anybody. He gathered the right information, and uh, he did his job well, and we understood that. We were understood that the agents were on one side, we were on the other. Their job was to catch us. Our job was to not get caught. Joe did better than us put maybe a hundred guys away, but on factual information that he gathered, mistakes that guys in that life made. Fascinating interview. You've never heard things that Joe's gonna talk about. Not really an interview, it's a sit down. We're chatting back and forth, sharing information. Two guys that were part of that life. Joe was deep undercover for about six years, knew many of the guys that I knew in that life. He originally infiltrated uh, the Columbos, my former family, then moved over to the Bananos. He's gonna tell you why, and uh, I think you're really gonna enjoy it. So stay tuned, get ready, go get a glass of wine, cup of coffee, sit down. This sit down, you're gonna really enjoy. This is, uh, you know, who'd have thought all these years, <laughs> all these years later, we'd be having a sit down, you know, yeah, on, uh, YouTube, on uh, YouTube. I was thinking today, Mike, Michael, when did I, I run into you? And it came to me. Mm -hmm. I was with Tony Mira. Right. right. And we went out to a car dealership. Did you have a car dealership or has something to do with a car dealership? On the island. I had two of them on the island, yeah. Okay, all right. <laughs> and I was with Tony Mira. Mm -hmm. And uh, we went out to this car dealership, and that, that's, that's when I met you. And that had to be in 19... It was either late 70s. Yeah, Mira wasn't in the can. I, it, was, it was before he went back in, so it had to be like 79 or 78, 79. Uh, and, you know... There, there was nothing illegal, you know, it was just, I don't know why he wanted to come out and talk to you, you know, I didn't. I like Tony, you know, I, I, I knew him fairly well, I mean, we, but, but I liked him a lot, you know, yeah, what I knew of him, I liked, yeah. I'll tell you what, they, all, they often ask me, say, who's the meanest guy you hung around with? Uh -huh. It was him. Yeah. Huh? Was, I mean, you know, he was off, Michael. I, <laughs> I mean, I seen him go off on people legitimate people you yeah. know you know uh i remember one time we were at the feast san Gennaro, right uh -huh. and uh he wanted to make a phone call so i forget where we went to a pay pay phone and there was a guy in there and his wife and kid and the guy was on the pay phone it was like he he went up and down that guy to get off the phone and, the, and you know and the poor guy you know the guy was a citizen from the Midwest somewhere, you know, just in New York on a vacation. And I, you know, I said, Tony, you can't, you know, and that, that was the beginning, one of the, the beginnings of, of he and I splitting. Right. Because I just don't like the way he, he talked to people. All right. You want to deal with a wise guy or, you know, a, another, but don't talk to citizens. I mean, you know, just cursing the guy out and they, and you know, the guy's not going to say anything, you know, and the guy's embarrassed because of his wife and kid, you know, um, but he, he, he was, a, he was something else. Uh, yeah. He, he had that reputation. I mean, I, I didn't honestly see that side of him because we, you know, we didn't do that much yeah, together, well, but, yeah, yeah. but, but I, he had that. Him, you had to be around him all the time. Yeah. He, he had that had reputation. A, yeah. I had a run in with him. We were, <laughs> we were, we came from a crap game. And it was, uh, you know, I don't know, three o'clock in the morning for, and we went to a diner. It was him, me, him, and a couple other guys. And 
the food came out a little late and he started to berate the the waitress. I mean, you know, for no reason at all, you know. So I, I stepped in, you know, and said, Tony, you know, it's not her fault. You know, maybe the, the chef didn't bring it out. So he started to berate me. Really, huh? And I couldn't say anything because there were other wise guys there. I knew enough to keep my mouth shut there. But when we got outside, just he and I, I laid into him. And that was the beginning of, of the rift between us. And I knew never to get within an arm's length of him if I was arguing with him. <laughs> I, well, you know, I mean, this is a crazy thing to say, but it's guys like him that, you know, I, I, don't, I, I don't think it's right to say it's guys like him that gave us a bad name. I mean, we made our own no, bad I, name. I, 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 I'll, I'll, be, I'll be totally honest with you. And, and I mean, you and I have known each other since what, the late 80s? Yeah. You know, we met at that baseball thing and we've That's always right. been honest with each other. I never came across anybody else that had a personality like him that berated citizens. Everybody, you know, all the guys I hung around with, they, 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 they never, never got into a beef or berated citizens. I mean, I, one time there was a little car accident, you know, uh, but not on, on, a, on a basis like he did. You know, yeah. I mean, they were always, always polite if, if it was a citizen. But you're right. <laughs> Guys like him, they get- gave us a bad name. Right. You know, Joe, it's, it's interesting, though, you say something like that. First of all, I think everybody knows who you are and what you did. And um, if I remember, you know, I, I, my my conversations about J. Edgar Hoover were, number one, that he never really wanted to admit the existence of the mafia for whatever reason. And that after he passed away, I think 72, 73, 72, that, yeah. yeah, something like that, you went undercover, because Hoover didn't want any of the agents to go undercover. He thought it was too dangerous. And you were really the first guy to break ground like that and convince the agency that, you know, rather than only deal with informants, that it was important to have, you know, good undercover operations. And you were really the guy that led that. That's partially uh uh, correct. And it, it's not that that he thought undercover was too dangerous. He didn't want to get his agents tainted. Hmm. Really? You know, that was that was the concern that he had of, of, you know, maybe getting in and and doing things that they weren't supposed to be doing, you know, taking or getting compromised you know, yeah. in, in the undercover field. Uh, but there were a group of us uh, that were doing undercover work, you know, while Mr. Hoover was alive. And, and, and let me say this, Michael, I love Mr. Hoover. He was a great, great director to work for. Mm -hmm. You know why? There was no BS. There were rules and you either followed the rules or you got punished. Hmm. And that's the way it was. And that's why the agency during those periods was a great agency, yeah. you know, uh, yeah. Because everybody knew these were Mr. Who, these, these were the rules of the FBI. If you broke them, you're going to get punished. There was no if, ands, or buts about it. It didn't matter, you know, if you were Italian, Irish, Jewish, male, female, black, white, green, you broke the rule, you're getting punished. And that's what made him, you know, and look, he did so much for the agency. But to get back to the undercover thing, uh, there were a group of us that did undercover while Mr. Hoover was alive, but it, it, it wasn't any long term deep cover. You know, we were doing one, two, three days uh, deals, uh, buying stolen art, buying, you know, stolen commodities, et cetera, et cetera. Undercover operations along those lines. And then after he passed away, yes, you're correct. That's when we got into doing long-term, long-term operations in the criminal side. Yeah. Mine was the first that, that really uh, delved into uh, deep cover, you know, where you, you leave the office and you never come back. And the only ID you have is, is your, is your fake ID. Well, yeah. In order pr to protect you, they had to kind of erase your even existence in the, in the agency, I would imagine. Yes, they did. Actually, yeah. they did. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's funny, I, I see how much respect you have for him by calling him Mr. Hoover, even at this point. So, um, But I, I've heard that, too, that when he ran the agency, there was no gray area. It was black and white, which is, which is an interesting question, Joe. You know, 
uh, my impression or my, my first dealing with Cosa Nostra when I was a recruit, and then the night I got made, um, we were told basically the same thing. You play by the rules. If you don't follow the rules, it could be serious consequences. And so, you know, you had, you had to play it that way. You being undercover for the five or six years that you were there, did you see it that way in our life? You know, it's so interesting to me to be able to see your perspective uh, from being undercover and, and seeing, you know, the life from a different perspective than I saw it. But I, I have a feeling we're going to come up with similar ideas about it. You know, Michael, I did. I mean, at one point in time, I didn't just walk in and say, hey, I'm Donnie Brasco. I want to hang around with you guys. I'm a jewel thief, blah, blah, blah. You know, it, it took me like seven months before anybody ever talked to me. Mm -hmm. I mean, or you know. Uh, so it wasn't like, the mo wasn't like the movie Donnie Brasco. And, uh, no, no, not where, you know. <laughs> right. Pacino uh, met you in the, well, in the you, thing. You're in the you're business. You know, it, 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 they have to condense it. So when, you know, Mirror was my first entree in, into the Bananos, my first infiltration was the Columbos. Right. I know Julie that. Julie Greco. You remember? You, yeah. You knew Julie oh, yeah. Greco, right? Sure. And, yes. And, and, and his crew up, up in Brooklyn. And then one day after I was with them, maybe, I don't know, three, four months. And then I'd get into a beef with a maid guy and a, an associate. Who was it, Joe? Do you remember? The guy's name was Frankie. I can't remember his last name. He had just gone out of the can. And, you know, make a long story short, I had all the background of a jewel thief. I mean, you know, I knew how to I knew how to get in in locks. I knew how to I knew alarms. I knew safes because if you don't know your if you don't know who, what, who you say you are. Right. You're dead. Right. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, we cased a few joints and, uh, you know, I said, Hey, I can't bypass that alarm, you know, because you can't, you can't be everything. Right. You, even, even though you're an expert, there's some things you can't do. And plus I didn't want to be, you know, <laughs> setting up scores for these guys. So there were two, two scores that I said, I can't bypass that alarm. Another one, it got in the joint and I said, you got to blow this safe. You can't, you know, it's not. So they get ticked off. And um, I get to the club one day and, and Jilly says, Donnie, we got to let's take a walk and talk. What's up, Jill? Well, Frankie, you know, Frankie wants to have a sit down. Um, because I told him, you know, you've been with us for four months. What a good thief you are. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, but you turn these two jobs. He wants us, you know, I says, hey, I, you know, that's all right. So I don't know if you remember, if you were ever in Jilly's club, but the, yeah, the, front, it was. Of, the front of it was the, the clothing store, the, all the yes. swag. <laughs> so we mm -hmm. go in the back room. At that point, I'd never seen any Jilly or Guido or a couple of the other guys, any pistolas in, in the club, you know. Mm -hmm. But Frankie pulls out a pistola and, and puts on a desk and said, Donnie, if you don't convince me that, you know, you're as good as Jilly says you are, you're only going out of here rolled up in that rug, you know? And I'm thinking, what the hell is this? So we're going back and forth for like four and a half, five hours. I, you're from Miami. Give me the name of guys in Miami. That you, and I said, look, Frankie, I'm not giving you the name of anybody. I said, you just got out of jail, man. How do I know that you didn't become a snitch in jail? Hmm. Why should Good I give you the name of guys I, I stole with in Miami? At, at, you know, so we go through this whole thing. Finally, Jilly says, okay, it's over. You know, this is it. Now I'm thinking to myself, look, these guys just called me out. And if, if I'm reading this life right, if I go up and shake hands and say, hey, you know, I know that uh, – uh, <clears throat> I, 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 I realize your concerns and you know, that it, it's not going to sit too well because it's, hey, we just called him out. Why, is, why isn't he PO'd? Mm -hmm. I figured, well, the only thing is here, I got to get a little, uh, a little aggressive. So as we get up and go to walk out, I hit Patsy. I tagged Patsy. Mm. That was a bold move, Joe. <laughs> I got to tell you, it was a good move, but it was bold. It wasn't Frankie because yeah. Frankie was a big guy. And I had been, you know, you mentioned the rules. 
Lefty had sat me down and, and gave me a litany of rules, what to do and what not to do. What will get you killed, Donnie, and what won't get you killed? You know, you just lose respect. So I got into beef with him, and, but I could never hit Frankie. Joe, what would have happened if you hit Frankie? You know. You I hit know. a made guy in that life, what happens? I'm gone. I'm dead. I'm gone. I don't have any appeal either. Yeah. You know, reason, I, mean, I was, I was yeah, told that. Yeah, the reason I ask you that, you know, you got sometimes people are saying different things. And, uh, you know, I responded a few times that you don't you don't raise your hands to a made guy in that oh, life ever. No. In, in fact, I was told by Lefty, Donnie, if you get into an argument with a made guy, do not embarrass him in front of other people. He said, do not embarrass him. He said, don't back down, but don't come out with anything that he can construe as you embarrassing him in front of other people. He said, and if, like I said, I was, Lefty sat me down and gave me all these rules. Mm -hmm. And he said, because you're gonna get into arguments with people, which he was true, it's life. Everybody doesn't like everybody, right? I mean. He said, and if you do, don't ever lay a hand on him. If you lay a hand on him, you know he's a made guy. He said, you're not coming out of there alive. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, because, you know, sometimes people make remarks. There's a lot of guys talking. And I, I have said a minute, you don't ever lay a hand on a made guy. There's no, there's no coming back from that. Uh, absolutely not. So this with Jilly, with Jilly, that was your first sit down. Yeah, that was my right? first sit down, actually, yeah. Well, you handled it well. You walked out of there, so it's good. <laughs> but you know what? I, I knew I couldn't go back, Michael. Yeah. I mean, I don't have to explain it to you because you know that you know it wasn't going to sit well. You know, Patsy wasn't going to wasn't going to deal with it well because I cracked him. Sure. And Frankie wasn't going to deal because him and they were partners. So one thing I say about Lefty, he taught me well. I'll tell you. He knew what, the life. Lefty the guy, was a student of the life. I said, Jilly, can we take a walk? He said, Yeah. And I, you know, and I said, Jilly, no disrespect to you. He's always been good to me, Guido. You know, I said, but I can't, you know, I can't come around here every day, every day anymore. Right. Because these guys were in his crew. I said, it, it, it's not going to end well. And he said, I, I appreciate that, Donnie. He said, Okay. I had met Mira before, so that's when I that's when I gravitated toward Mira and and ended up with the Bananos. It was actually a good thing for my family at that time that it went that way. That, that was a good sit down, Joe. <laughs> but you know, let let me ask you this too, because I, I got a couple of questions. You know, look, I know being in that life for over twenty years and growing up in a way with my dad. I don't want to say that every day I was on guard because I can't say that. You know. But there were so many times, so many days when I felt like, you know, I had to watch myself. I was making a lot of money. You know how it is. People are looking in at you, you yeah, know. Yeah. And uh, I can't imagine you being undercover like that, having to worry every day. Did I blow my cover? Did somebody find out something? H how was it to live under that kind of anxiety, maybe stress? I don't know what to call it, but because at any moment in time, something you know, could go wrong. I'm blessed by the good Lord that I don't get stressed and I don't get anxiety. I mean, it's just my nature, I guess. But, you know, you mentioned that. I remember one day Sonny Black telling me, you know, I used to stay. I had an apartment uptown. I had an apartment in Rupert, uh, Rupert Towers. You know where that? that yeah, was, right? yeah. I would stay with, with Sonny. He had an apartment upstairs in the Motion Lounge on the third floor. Mm -hmm. And... uh I'd sleep on his couch and, and stuff. And in the morning, we'd have talks, you know, over our coffee and, and uh, hard roll and butter. <laughs> mm -hmm. And uh, he, he'd tell me, he said, you know, Donnie, he said, this, this life, he said, he said, you wake up every day thinking, is today the day I go to jail or is today the day I get whacked? And I'm thinking, well, Sonny, <laughs> you're thinking that. And I'm thinking, well, maybe not the day I go to jail, but is this the day I get whacked? <laughs> I leave the yeah. jail out, you know? Yeah. Well, it's yeah. true. You know, it's true. I mean, you got to think about it because at any any point in time, you don't know 
who's watching, who's looking in, who may hear something by accident. Hey, you know, I, I, I you know, you're hanging with this guy, Joe, you know who he is. You know, you never know. You never know. I found a lot of jealousy and envy. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's the reason that Mira turned on me and he called the three sit downs to try to get me killed. Because when he got back out of the can, he thought I was earning thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars with Lefty and Sonny. He wanted me back. Mm -hmm. Right. But he never laid a claim on me. Never did. Which was his mistake, right? I was going to say, that was his mistake from the beginning. But when he went, Lefty did. Uh -huh. Lefty went to Mike Sabella. Mike Sabella mm -hmm. at that time was our capo. Right. right. And Lefty went to Mike and, say, and said, uh, I'm claiming Donnie. See? And then when Mira came out, he had, he had no authority. Yeah, no, yeah and no leg to stand on. Uh, yeah. So that's why he put the, the, the beefs in. Uh, that that in, in the drug deal, I had stole $250,000 of the family's money. And uh, by that time now, uh, they had Wack Galenti. So right. uh, they knocked down Mike and, and uh, uh, me and Lefty got put under, under Sonny Black. He was our capo. And S Sonny won those three sit downs for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's uh, you, you never know. I mean, you know, you got a guy that, that really doesn't like you, you know, and I mean, I wasn't a made guy. I was just an associate, uh, but I was just lucky that that that, that lefty liked me and Sonny liked me. You needed that part. You know, I had the same. Believe it or not, Joe, even as a made guy, because I was so active and there was so much going on with the gas business at that time. And, yeah. you know, I was one of the younger guys and the older guys kind of resent you for that. And, and I had to sit down so many times over the gas business mostly because there was so oh, much right. money yeah. around. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I'll tell you, I never forget, Joe, there was one night I walked into a room and, you know, one of the horrors of that life, you get, uh, you make a mistake, you don't know what the politics around, you walk into a room, you don't walk out again. And I had that experience one night. I'll be honest with you, I was scared because I, I didn't like the setup the way I walked in. Obviously, it turned out okay. But, you know, it was something that um, that kind of turned me off a little bit on the life, the way it came down, because I didn't think it was, it was you know, warranted. But, you know, and I wanted to get your impression. When, when I walked away from the life, I didn't walk away because I was mad at anybody. I didn't say, you know, they didn't treat me right because I knew what I was in. You know, I knew yeah, what the yeah, life was all about. I left because I wanted a better life. I didn't want to put my family under what my family went through. But, you know, did you see it? Because I know it's a life that's allegedly built on honor and respect. Um, how did you see it? Being so deep undercover and being around real guys the way you were and... How did you see it? You know, Michael, it's funny. I had to walk a, a, a fine line with Lefty because once we got under Sonny Black, Sonny took a liking to me. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he's the captain. Right. So he would confide things in, in, in me. And I didn't know, well, you know, should I tell Lefty? Mm -hmm. Because if this comes out later on, I can't get Lefty ticked off at me. I think loyalty went with who your friend was. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. If the guy was truly your friend, I mean, I seen this. If a guy was truly your friend, you stuck with him, but he could be another guy in the crew. And he, you know, just because he's in your crew doesn't mean that, that he's your friend. And I could see guys planting, you know, little seeds with the captain, with Sonny, about somebody else in the crew that they weren't that, that they weren't tight with. Mm -hmm. So loyalty went if if the guy was your friend is the way I, I and you know it it's it's funny because I'm thinking to myself this guy's a made guy he's a made guy you know uh, why's he got a brown nose the captain yeah why is he snitching out what another guy's doing. It's not, a, you know, do your own thing. Was there a hundred percent loyalty? No, no. And, and honor? Uh, no, no. And you know what? I think mm -hmm. I saw that with the younger guys that were in the crew versus the older, the older guys that were, you know, in the crew. 
You mean you saw less loyalty with the younger guys than yeah, the older yeah, guys? Yeah, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, I, I, I seen it. That I was one of the younger guys, but I was brought up by my father. Who yeah, was, but, you, but look who your dad was. Yeah. You know? He was all about, you know, loyalty in that life and honor and, and respect, um, you know, to, to a fault, I think, in his case. But, yeah, you know, he suffered, one, yeah. Yeah, he suffered uh, a lot over you it. Know, but, how many guys would have, you know, I don't mean this any other way than how many guys would have spent that much time in a can if they weren't loyal to the organiz, you know, to the society, to the organization? Yeah, and you know, right. what my dad, Joe, even things he didn't agree with, he wouldn't go against because he said, you because know, that, look, I, they were the rules, right? Yeah, I took yeah. my oath and I'll die by it. And that was the end of that. And, and that's yeah, how he lived. And, many, you know, <laughs> there's not many like that in the world, let alone in, in the society. No, yeah. that's, that's true, w without a doubt. But, uh, you know, I'm glad to hear that because uh, we, we come, even though we were on different sides, we, we came away with the same impression of that in many ways. Yeah, and, yeah. And, you know, guys, you know, I, I always get the question is that, how did you deal with these guys? Well, I always, I always have been the kind of FBI agent is, hey, look, you made the choice to do what you do, right? That doesn't make, to me, that doesn't make you a bad person. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, just because, say, you chose a life of crime, you know? Unless you're a, a serial murderer or a rapist, you know, to me, hey, that's what you chose to do, man. You know, uh, as long as as long as that's what you want to do, it's not up to me to, you know, to judge you. Mm -hmm. All I'm here for is to gather evidence if you're, you know. Committing uh, crimes. If you're committing a crime. There were so many guys that I had contact with that were associates you know and i never pulled them into the net right i never pulled them into the net in fact i never even put down on paper that we met mm -hmm. because i had no part in the conversation we were just say hey, we're going to take a ride to, to long island i gotta meet you know i gotta meet somebody and when we got there we got introduced and i don't know i might have been looking at cars i, I you know it wasn't my business to you know I, I, I never even put down. I met Michael Francis. <laughs> Thank you, Joe. <laughs> no, I mean, because that wasn't, yeah. wasn't that's not my mentality. If, if it was something that I got involved in illegally, then I'd make notation. Right. But I met so many guys, you know, and, 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 and I know they were associates. They may have been doing something else, but they weren't doing it with me or with, you know, with uh, Sonny or Lefty. So, I mean. Well, that... let, me, let me ask you this, Joe. I was, uh, I don't know if you, you heard of this, but I was a subject, myself and Don King, of an undercover operation, uh, undercover operation. It was called uh, Shadow Boxing. Yeah, the boxing deal. Did you ever hear that way back yeah. when? Did you know an agent by the name of Victor Guerrero? Yeah, yes. I, yes, I know him. Okay. Yeah. Well, Victor well, was, or he was, huh? Did he work that? Yeah, he worked it, and he uh, his name at that time was Victor Quintana, and he came to me uh, posing as a, a, a former drug dealer from Colombia that had a lot of money, wanted to get into the fight game at a high level. So the reason I ask you this, he was around me for about eight months. We became good friends. I mean, I liked the guy a lot. What I didn't realize, we used to play racquetball together, Joe, and he always used to complain of a bad back. He had the Nagra tape recording in the back. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right? <laughs> Me, I, I'm so smart, I never even checked them out, right? I never checked them out. But he had a no. bunch of recordings on me. But my point is, we, we did a lot together. I, I, I really liked him, and I, I got a lot of respect for him for two reasons. Number one, my brother, who had a drug problem at the time, was trying to get drugs from him. And he wouldn't put that down. He would come to me and say, hey, you got to watch your brother. You know, he's not doing the right thing. Yeah, yeah. And uh, at that time, I didn't know he was an agent. And then after the operation blew up, nothing came of it. When I went on trial in the Giuliani case, they called him in to testify against me. I was like shocked. I said, man, I'm dead. I don't know what's going to happen here. 
He, he told the absolute truth, and he said, Michael never engaged in any criminal activity during the whole time I was with him. Joe, I was stunned. I think he got me acquitted, because he was yeah. an FBI. I mean, he told the truth, because, you know, I was very careful the way I spoke to him. But my point is, later on, I met him, and I like him a lot. He's retired now. I think he, he's living out yeah, in Arizona. Retired. Yeah, yeah, he's retired. Great, great guy. Did you ever feel like, you know, you got close to Lefty and close to Sonny or any of those guys where you really liked them? Lefty looked at me like a son. I mean, that was the age difference, you know. Uh, and uh, uh, you knew Lefty. Lefty yeah. was a tough guy to be around, Michael. <laughs> Tough man to be around 24-7 for 14, 15 hours a day. Uh, <laughs> that, that You earned your money just by doing yeah, that. <laughs> just with him, believe me. Uh, because it was all about lefty. Yeah. But his son was a drug addict. You knew his son, Tommy, right? Yeah. And He was bad. He was a bad, bad addict, yes. Yeah, yeah. And I can remember one time, and I, I was friendly with lefty's daughters. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, I knew his whole family. I was the best man at his wedding when he married Louise. You know, uh, we got he got married at City Hall. Uh, I spent a lot of time at his house. So there were times when when he was just absolute. Uh, you couldn't be around him. You couldn't be around him. But then there were other times he loved his grandkids. I mean, you know, look. I don't have to tell you, to me, Lefty was a stone cold killer. Yeah. But he loved his grandkids. His one daughter, I forget her name. Uh, her son must have been about five, six at that time. He was nuts over that kid. Yeah. And Tommy, I, I think Tommy kind of broke his heart mm -hmm. because he was a junkie. I mean, I, I know one time he, 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 we were at the bar on, uh, on Madison Street. I can't think of the name of it now. We used to hang out at. And uh, he said, Donnie, he said, um, I want you to go look for Tommy. Why, well, what's the matter? Well, he hasn't been home in, you know, four or five days. And I don't know if it was his wife or his girlfriend, but they had a baby. And he said, uh, you know, they, they don't have any food. I go over there and, and he didn't leave any money or anything. He said, I want you to go find him and throw him a beat. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, and try to straighten the kid out. Sonny, you could be around. Right. And you, you knew Sonny Black. I mean, yeah. these guys were legitimate gangsters. No doubt. Right? No I mean, doubt. okay. But Sonny, you could, you know, I could be, I, I spent a lot of time, like I said, I, I would stay over Sonny's apartment with him. And you could talk to, with Lefty. The only conversation was uh, the mob. Mm -hmm. so what was going on? With Sonny, you can you can talk about anything. Right. You know, it didn't have to be about, you know, criminal business, you know, about the bookmaking operation, this operation, that operation, uh, whatever. Uh, so I became close with him in, in that way. In fact, <clears throat> one day we were having uh, dinner at Creasy's. Remember Creasy's? Oh, yeah. You know, those are my, uh, my father's cousins, Creasy's. Is that right? I ran a place, yeah. I, yeah. Just quickly, Joe, they were my father's cousins, but every time we, we went in there, I don't know if you remember, the, the waiters used to try to rob us on the tab all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God, my father wanted to give him a beating so many times, I had to stop him. He right? says, yeah, he says, Mike, check the check. I said, they're our cousins. He said, don't trust them. They're bad people. <laughs> but the so food we was having, great. We, we were having dinner at, at Creasy's, me and Sonny. He said, Donnie, I'm going to ask you a favor. He said, and uh, I said, yes, yeah, Sonny, what is it? He said, if I get clipped, I want you to t promise me you'll take care of my son. Wow. I mean. Yeah, you can't get closer than that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let me ask you this, Joe. It is a natural question. You know, just from just curiosity on my part, when you, when you had to turn the evidence against these guys, how did it, how did you feel? Were you able to separate it? Look, this is my job and these are my feelings. Yeah. Yeah. Michael, I was, I mean, I, I really was, um, uh, I never had, I never had any pro any problem along those lines. And <clears throat> I think because again, you know, as I said previously, I always felt that everybody makes choices in life. Mm -hmm. You made a choice to go that way. 
I made a choice to go this way. As long as I'm comfortable with the evidence I gather is legitimate, I don't have any problem. Now, did I want to see Sonny get clipped? No. That was wrong. Did I want to see Mira? <laughs> it didn't bother me too much when he got clipped, to be honest <laughs> with you. You know, Lefty didn't get clipped, but as you know, he was on his way to get clipped. Right. And they warned him. Picked it up on, on the wire and, and, and they snatched him before he got, he got to, the, uh, to the bar. Uh, as far as going away to jail, I didn't have any regrets over that. Mm. I didn't want to see, I didn't want to see anybody get clipped over what I did. Right. You know, uh, but again, uh, they knew the consequences, right? Yeah. No, you're, we you're in the life. But you know, I, I tell you from our perspective, most of us, like me, my dad, we spoke, you know, as long as the agents did their job and they didn't fabricate evidence, we understood, you know, you were on one side, we were on the other. Yeah. And, uh, you know, my dad always told me, he said, you respect, you respect law enforcement as long as they're doing their job. That's their job. Yeah. And we do I mean, what we I, do. I, in all the trials, Michael, I never had, I never, ever had one turned over or lost on uh, false evidence, mm -hmm. false testimony. You know, not one, not one. And... <clears throat> I don't know if I ever told you this in, in some of our conversations, but um, after um, after it came out who I was in the papers, right? Sonny knows that he's that he's kind of because you know he introduces me to Santo Traficante. Mm -hmm. He introduces me to I mean you know everybody that that mean uh, everybody. <clears throat> So he kind of knows that, that, that he's got a problem. So he gets, and you, you probably know this, I mean, he gets a phone call that he's got to go to a, a sit down, mm -hmm. right? And this is really true because I got it from his, his girlfriend at the time who I knew, and I'll, I'll get to that. That's it for today, but we got a lot more to come in part two. You're going to be fascinated by some of the things you didn't see in the movie and you haven't heard anywhere else. Uh, Joe Pistone, Donnie Brasco coming up. Stay tuned. Part two coming up soon. So that's it. How do I always leave you? Be safe. Be healthy. God bless. And I will see you.